Hi there once again. Um, on this video, you're going to learn about linear regression. Okay. Um, on the previous video, you learned about correlation. Okay. Um, now, linear regression is basically this. All right. Now, it tells you what the precise relationship is between two variables. Okay. Um, the relationship has to be linear. Okay. That's why it's called linear regression. Okay. So, in the previous example or in the previous video, you saw um, an example like this where as the number of hours um, of sleep that you had increased okay hours of sleep um, your marks that you achieve the test on a test that you do next day that also increases okay now right so the graph looks something like this so basically if you drew a line of best fit it would probably look something like this um, right so you're basically trying to figure out the equation of this line okay now if it's a linear graph um, it's going to be in this form isn't it y is equal to mx plus c all right so um, you need to have an intercept you have a gradient all right so a linear graph looks like this so this is what we try and find um, when we say oh, we're going to do linear regression okay uh, we're going to find this equation of this line all right so Correlation tells you how closely these white points lie to this line of best fit. Okay, how closely they lie. Lie. Okay. Whereas regression tells you the relationship between the two variables. Okay. How y varies when x varies. Okay. And usually on the x-axis you put the independent variable, isn't it? And on the y-axis the variable that changes, the dependent variable. All right. Okay. So I'll use the exact same values that I used um, for my previous video for x and y. Okay, now these are the values that I used for x and y. All right, x um, is the number of hours and y is the marks. Okay, and to work out um, the equation of the line of the best fit, you need these two intermediate values. Okay, you need sxx and sxy. Okay. You don't need SYY, you need SXX, SXY, right? Um, right, now, if you are trying to figure out the line of best fit, um, the general equation looks something like this, okay? Where B is the gradient and A is the intercept, okay? Now, to figure out B, the gradient, you divide SXY by SXX, all right? So let's see what that is. So that's uh, 142.5 divided by 42. Let's see what that is. That's equal to 3.39. Okay. Now most of you doing this probably do core one maths as well, core one pure maths. So if you know your gradient, um, and if you know two coordinates um, for x and y, you can work out what a is. All right, the intercept. Okay. Now, to work out A, you just don't use any coordinates. You use the mean of X and the mean of Y. Okay, you don't pick and choose any two random coordinates here, okay, um, for X and Y. You've got to choose the mean of X and the mean of Y, all right? So, the mean of Y is 58.375. The mean of x is um, the sum of all the x's is 36, 36 divided by 8 is 4.5 and that times b which is 3.39 um, and in the exam when you're doing this okay when you're trying to figure out a using the answer for what you found for b try not to use this value this is not a precise value there are some decimal points after this okay so just save that on the calculator and uh, bring it over here okay so save that answer here because um, they're very strict on the answers which are the two decimal points okay or sometimes three significant figures but um, so if any numbers that you missed out here they could alter your final answer okay so in the exam don't forget about these extra numbers here all right Okay, so we've got to figure out A, so we know our mean of X, that times our B coefficient, which is our gradient, times this, uh, sorry, um, and then on the other side you have this, the mean of Y. So to get A, we basically have to do um, this 
minus 58.375. Okay, so I take away this answer from 58.375 and I get 43.11. Okay, so my equation for that straight line is y is equal to 3.39x plus 43.11. Okay, so if I sketch this graph um it might look something like this okay and all the points would lie very close to this line okay because i got a pmcc if you look at the previous video i got a pre pmcc of 0 0.989 that was my product moment correlation coefficient okay um right but uh, it won't be a hundred percent perfect fit for that to be the case uh, you have to have all these points exactly on the line okay um, whereas the equation for that line is this all right um, and some of you if you're wondering oops where has it got okay some of you if you're wondering how um, I got these values of SXX and SY SXY please look at my previous video on product moment correlation coefficient and you'll see um, the method behind that I go through it very um, very slowly and um, can easily follow the steps I've taken there all right so that's the equation for this line though all right now what do these values um 3.39 43.11 mean okay so this stands for hours number of hours of sleep and this stands for marks this this axis here so if I have slept for zero hours so I say if I have not slept at all I could expect to achieve a mark of 43.11 okay that's what it means there all right so you've got to if in the exam they tend to ask that okay what this what does the intercept mean in context of this problem okay so you have to say you got to put it in layman's term that if you don't sleep at all if you had no hours of sleep your marks would be 43.11 okay and what does this value mean 3.39 all right that means for every extra hour of sleep you get, you would probably you you'd score 3.39 marks more. All right, that's what that means. Okay, so for every extra hour of sleep, you score 3.39 marks more. All right, that's what the gradient is, isn't it? For every one unit change of x, what's the change in y? All right, good. Couple of more things to look at. Um, they tend to ask you questions like this okay now you have these number of hours of sleep 1 to 8 but let's say if you slept for 4.5 four and a half hours of if you had four and a half hours of sleep what would be your mark all right um so to do that we substitute 4.5 for x so x is equal to 4.5 and we see what our y could be all right so 3.39 and 4.5 times 4.5 plus 43.11 okay okay so the marks you achieve would be this okay so this is all just a prediction okay um right so that could be the mark that you'd be achieving okay because for four hours if you had four hours of sleep you achieve 55 marks if you had five hours of sleep you get 60 marks so right in between the two you are expected to achieve this much okay they'll ask you whether this answer that you found here is it reliable all right now you could say it is reliable because this value of 4.5 lies okay within your data set okay for x this value of 4.5 lies within your data set for x so therefore it's reliable um or it could be summarized in one word you are interpolating okay that's what it means when you interpolate okay you are predicting um, a value okay for y based on a value for x which falls within the data set for x okay that's interpolating all right that blue dot there you're interpolating for y all right now they might ask you okay so you you're saying this is how it works the relationship between hours of sleep and the marks um, this formula here where's that formula this formula here all right so for if you've slept 
10 hours, how much marks would you expect to score? All right. So if you've slept for 10 hours, I've got to substitute 10 in, in place of x. So that's um, 33.9 because I put 10 there. That makes it 33.9 plus 43.11. I get 77.01 marks. Okay. Now, then they'll ask you again whether this is a reliable value. Okay. In this case, though, it is not reliable because this 10 hours does not fall within the data set for values of x okay it falls outside okay so therefore it's a bit of a guess it's um so 10 would be somewhere here so you're saying okay this graph would probably continue on like this so therefore you would get that value of y for this value of 10 here for x <clears throat> so you'd say this is not very reliable because it does not fall within the values for x okay now this could be summarized in one term this is called extrapolation or extrapolating okay because we are only looking at a linear model okay and some of these models only fit to a certain value okay beyond a range the model doesn't make sense because if i said if, if you had 20 hours of sleep you potentially would be um, scoring 100 marks okay which is um or more than 100 marks which uh, it completely break, breaks down doesn't it because the maximum marks you can get for an exam is 100 and no one's going to bother sleeping 20 hours okay so this model only works for a certain range of values okay so it becomes unreliable when you go beyond the data set points okay because the data set only includes one to eight values of one to eight for hours so you chosen 20 hours which gives you an answer of sorry i should have made that 3.39 that's the gradient so so if you slept for 20 hours you'll get 110.91 marks which is not possible because you could achieve only a maximum of 100 marks so this model only works within a tight um, sort of region okay so you like to say it's not very reliable because you're extrapolating there, all right?